Hello and welcome to our online worship for the fourth Sunday after Trinity and C Sunday. My name's Jo Neary, I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team and it's good to be with you to worship. Last Sunday we were in the cathedral celebrating with the deacons as they were ordained by Bishop Stephen and it was a glorious time, a real celebration, the full pomp and ceremony of the Church of England and Sarah Keane, who's part of the congregation in Beminster, was ordained deacon at uh, the end of a long journey of discernment for her and she goes off now to the Golden Cap to be a curate there whilst carrying on with her secular job at the same time. So we wish Sarah every blessing as she begins this new stage of life and new stage of ministry. And hopefully you can see her there resplendent in her new robes and dog collar next to Bishop Stephen, the new Bishop of Salisbury. Today is Sea Sunday and we remember with some prayers uh, those who work and sail across our seas in all different kinds of jobs and situations. And we think about the Sailors Society, uh, that's a charitable organisation set up to support people working in ministry on the sea. Let us prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts this Sea Sunday to all those who serve at sea. Be with seafarers, Lord, on all their voyages, to cheer them and keep them safe in all dangers. Let nothing afloat or on shore cut them off from you. Bless all on board their ship, whatever their responsibility. Help them to be good shipmates and bring them back again safely to their homes and to those who long for their return. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing our hymn as ever accompanied by the musicians of St Martin in the Fields.
we come to our time of penitence. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the collect prayer for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. For God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Philip Coltart will deliver the reading today. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and took off, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came upon him. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. David leads us in a reflection on today's reading. Hello, it's uh, good to be back with you again on this week's online worship. And uh, it's been a very busy time over the, uh, the past few weeks. I've probably been to uh, Salisbury more than I need to or should have gone. And due to the uh, train strike a couple of weeks ago, I meant I had to drive twice when I would possibly have caught the train. But the most joyous, we had two joyous occasions. One I'll talk about in a little while. But on Sunday, a really joyous occasion when Sarah Keane, who's taken part in these live acts of worship many times, was ordained into the diaconate. And uh, she'll now be serving her curacy time with the Golden Cap team based on and around the parishes of uh, Lyme Regis. So lots of rejoicing going on. The other one I'll come back to, as I said, in a minute. 
Well, today is a Bible reading uh, from Luke's Gospel. Uh, it's, I always find, fascinating. It's a story you will have heard of many, many times before, I'm sure. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. You know, the Good Samaritan story is far deeper than um, simply meaning that you must do good to your neighbour. And that's what a lot of people seem to think it is. It says more than just do your best to show compassion across barriers of racial hostility. Although I do believe that in today's world, probably that needs to be emphasised more than it has been for a long time. It is interesting because for me, the story of the Good Samaritan, if you um, try not to concentrate on all the story of the of the, the priest and the rabbi and all the people who just walk past him because they would be made impure and wouldn't be allowed to, uh, to to take part in their worship at the temple if they were to touch him. If you try and look wider than that, for me, the story is about how do we see our responsibility for caring for people in need. And Jesus, of course, was making a political point at that time. Oh, of course, I have to be careful there because I'm often told that the church must never make political points. It's not our job to do that. But Jesus was making a political point uh, about a group of people who were absolutely hated by many of the others, the Samaritans. But it was that person who picked up the uh, injured and, uh, and, and uh, uh, man. I think for us, it's very much about how do we care? How can we show our care in many ways? And we are entering onto a time at the moment of uncertainty, a time of not being sure of what our financial situation is going to be in the world. And certainly for many people uh, in this country and many people locally to our parishes as well. Well, I told you I'd talk about the other joyous occasion of the cathedral because I think it crosses the boundaries here for a moment. Three weeks ago, many of us went in the afternoon for the welcome service and enthronement of Bishop Stephen Lake, our new Bishop of Salisbury. It was a really wonderful occasion in many ways, a really joyous occasion, as I've, as I've said. It was good to welcome him back into our diocese. After all, Stephen was born in Poole, he served his curacy in Sher at Sherbourne Abbey, and then he went back to be vicar of Branksome. So he's got a lifelong association with the Dorset part of Salisbury Cathedral. And he talked about that in some ways, as he did again last Sunday when he pointed out to everyone that 34 years ago, on the very spot where he was ordaining people today, he himself was ordained. And again, I heard him make the, uh, the, the, the lovely point as your candidates, as your deacons walk out of the cathedral today, have a look and think which one of them is going to be Bishop of Salisbury one day. However, back to his throne, it was good to welcome him. Now, he did something in that service, which I found uh, fascinating, because never in my life have I ever been paid to go to a service in the cathedral. Now, you could argue, semantically, of course, that the vicar is paid every week to lead worship. That's his job, or her job, their job. Sorry if I'm upsetting anybody. I don't mean to, honestly. I'm trying hard. Not hard enough, I know. But uh, during that service, he gave everybody, not him personally, he had a group of very willing workers uh, doing it for him. He gave everybody a gold envelope, a golden envelope. I thought I'd won the ticket to get to Willy Wonka World, but no, I was mistaken. I really was. And when the instruction was given to open the envelope, what did we find inside? Well, some of you will know, I'm sure, because it's fairly well known now. But we found inside a letter from Bishop Stephen to us, talking about what he'd just spoken about in his address, his first address to the diocese. And that was based on the story of the talents. You'll know that parable as well, I'm sure, where the master's going away, he calls three of his servants together, he gives them amounts of money and tells them to, when he comes back, um, to, you know, to make sure he's earned, uh, earned some interest when he asks for it back. 
Well, of course, we know that the first servant is very clever and he invests it in bitcoins or something. I'm not quite sure. And when he gives it back, he's given him three times the amount of money that he got. The second servant hadn't been quite so uh, sure of bitcoins and he just invested it in an ISA or whatever. And he was able to give double back the money. And the third servant, probably me, if I'm honest, was a little bit concerned that uh, if he, he lost the money with his investment, then the master would be so angry he'd uh, be in trouble. So instead of doing anything with it, he just hid it, and when he came back, he gave it him back. No interest, the amount he'd been given. A wonderful story again. Except that the master was very angry with him because he hadn't done what he told him to, to go and invest it and etc. So why... Uh, what has all this got to do with uh, the gospel from today? Well, the point of the £10 note, because there was a £10 note for every one of us, £10,000 given away in the cathedral that day. Don't panic, dear viewer. It didn't cost the par parishes or the diocese any money at all. Two very, very kind benefactors had given the money between them to the bishop to do this. And the point was, take the money... And do something good with it. Do something good with it. Now perhaps you can begin to see where we're starting to slide back into the story from today. Joe, very sensibly, being a very sensible lady, woman, sorry, I have to be very careful again, a very sensible woman, uh, has worked with the ladies from Gin Church and they've pulled their money together and they're wonderfully going to give it to Mount Joy School for a project that is being done in memory, I believe, of the young lad Ollie that uh, Joe took a funeral for uh, two weeks ago in South Perrot. And that's wonderful and uh, what a great thing to do. Being useful, doing something useful. Well, one of our church members, Vivian, who is the PCC secretary in Beminster, she matched the money herself and then gave it to the food bank. A tremendous gesture. Again, helping people, doing something useful. Others who were there on the day have done all kinds of things. And presently, when I heard, uh, uh, or was at a meeting with Bishop Stephen early this week, he was telling us that the £10,000 that he'd given out in the cathedral was now worth £140,000. Can you imagine that? £10,000 now worth £140,000 from match things that people have done. And churches have um, been able to raise sufficient funds in a poorer, perhaps, areas to start messy church so families and children can be part of the church. Others have given it to food banks again. Some have set up community fridges or worked with other agencies to, uh, uh, to, to do good and for the benefit of others. That brings me back to my £10 and why the story, I think, links today. I, I thought hard about what to do with my £10. I prayed hard about it too. I did think of going to the Red Lion or the Greyhound, but that didn't seem good use of the money, personally. But then I suddenly felt God saying to me, you know, David, we're going to enter into a time of financial hardship. People are going to need help. And one of the people they may turn to is the church because they would expect that somehow we should be able to help in a time of crisis for them in their lives. Many people do already. So I had a conversation with Joe, and I said, you know, I think what I'd like to do with my £10 is ask people to match it. And already, people have. Because what I would like to do is to form a relief of hardship fund, I don't know what else to call it, where if somebody is really struggling in a few weeks' time when this financial crisis begins to bite and they just need some electricity to cook their family tea, I can say, yeah, here we are. Put this value on your stick or whatever it is uh, that, uh, that they have to do. Or if somebody comes to me and says, we need some petrol because we need to take my mother or our child to a hospital appointment and we're really just on such a hard time, just to be able to say, well, here we are. You go and make sure you get to the hospital. For the past two weeks, I've been writing about this on the Pew News. 
I've been talking about it in churches, any opportunity I get to remind people. And so far, the Bishop's £10 in the fund I'd like to stand, uh, set up stands now at £155. Thank you. Thank you to everyone already who has responded. Some have matched it to £10, £10 for £10. Some hadn't got £10 on them when I saw them, so gave me what they had got. Others have given more than £10 because they felt they could afford it, which was something that obviously touched their hearts as well and would like to see happen. That's the kind of kindness shown, you know, by the Good Samaritan. He gave what he had got himself, his donkey, and some denarii, some small coins, to the innkeeper to look after the man with the promise that, actually, when I get back, if you need more, let me know. Times are going to be hard for many people. And many of us are very fortunate, aren't we, that we perhaps um, will be able to weather that storm of hardship better than others. If you'd like to help me to increase that fund, I'd love to get it higher so that if needs be, we we can help. If it's not all used now, it'll never go to waste. There are always people who do need help somewhere and will come to us as a church. But if you'd like to help me, well, yes, you can match the £10. You can give whatever you want. Just pop it into an envelope and write on it, talent. You can post it to me. I don't think it, talent alone will get it to the vicar the rectory, but you know my address. Or you can just push it through the door. You could pop it on the plate at the service on Sunday. You could give it to somebody to bring along to me. And I'm going to see if I can not only... Uh, do what we've done already, get that £10 to where it is, but perhaps even double that. And why not treble it? I think it's a good cause. I hope you do too. Because that story lends us to believe that it's more, as I say, than just about being good against cultural boundaries. It's about being able to care and to support for someone in need at that time. I hope that uh, you don't feel this is a wasted 10 minutes of your life, or 13 minutes and 20 seconds as I speak to you, the little device that's in front of my eyes, I hope you feel that this is a good cause and something to do that will be of help uh, to those in greater need than ourselves. I'm delighted with the response so far, thank you. And I hope and pray that we can continue to work in and for God's kingdom in this place. Yes, showing his love to the world around. Being prepared to do as God tells us, to love our neighbour as ourselves. I know many of you do this already. I know that many of you support all kinds of charities without even muttering a word. You just do it because it's what you feel is right and it's for the cause that has struck your heart in the same way that this moment in time uh, I feel my heart is reached what is ready to reach out to those in need when the time occurs. Thank you. Thank you in advance for your prayers. Please pray for it. And if your situation is that you're unable to make a donation, that's absolutely fine. But you can pray for us and pray for this initiative and that it is uh, something to help others as well. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you're still enjoying our online acts of worship each week. The figures suggest that people uh, still are. We still feel it's a worthwhile thing to be doing as part of our outreach and mission to you. Thank you for the many nice comments that you give uh, to us. And particularly, I thank Joe and Fiona and Harry for all the hard work that they do behind these uh, moments that you see. I just sit here in the comfort of my study ready to press a button to say stop in a few minutes. Then the hard work begins for those who put it all together. A thank you to them as well. May we continue. May we continue as servants of God to work for the good of his world, to relieve those who are suffering and to bring joy and hope into a sad, at times sad world. May God the Father bless you in all that you do and in all your generosity today and always. Amen. 
we affirm our faith using the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. First, we pray with a prayer from the Sailor Society for Sea Sunday. Almighty God, we remember those whose lives are lived on your great oceans. For those who go down to the sea in ships, we give thanks. They enrich our lives at great personal cost. May they daily feel the presence of your protection, the warmth of your presence and the love of your relationship as they seek the hope of safe passage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Lord God, we pray for new deacons, priests and lay ministers and particularly our new Bishop Stephen, the Bishop of Salisbury. Grant all those given the responsibility of leadership in churches all over the world. Give them your grace, your mercy, your peace, your just judgment and your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen and for all in authority. Strengthen those who hold positions of responsibility and lead in government and in local government and in our local councils. We pray that you will help all leaders act with integrity, justice, mercy and honesty. We pray for the flourishing and well-being of all communities and for an end to persecution or discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the care of creation and for the climate emergency. Lord, help us to protect the planet that we are stewards of. Give wisdom to those in authority to make decisions over business and over legislation so that the climate emergency may be at the centre of their decision making. Empower scientists to develop new technology that will better share the resources of your world. And help us to be fair and to live in equity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our local communities, for the church communities in the villages of the Beminster team, for all who live and work in our villages, for our community facilities, pubs, shops, village halls, schools. We pray for all those who run businesses locally and employ others. We pray for those who visit on holiday. We pray for the flourishing of our communities and the love of our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you will heal those who are sick, working through the goodness and power of doctors and nurses and carers to bring healing and wholeness. Strengthen those who are weak. Encourage those who are downhearted. Comfort those who are lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn that they may be comforted, remembering particularly the families who have been recently bereaved and are preparing for funerals at this time. We remember those we love but see no longer. Comfort us 
through their memories and the love we received from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At the beginning of a new week, Lord, we bring before you the things we have planned to do this week, the places we will go, the people we will see. We pray that we will seek your face in all situations, that we will know your presence with us and that in the unexpected things that happen, we will know your courage and your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord God, be the ship that holds us in the sea of life. Be the rudder that keeps us on the straight course. Be the outrigger that supports us in times of great testing. May your spirit fill our sails to carry us through each day and keep our bodies strong so that we may paddle steadfastly on in the voyage of life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for online worship. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.